Well, hello and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2 second channel video. Today we're going to talk about these little TVs I got here. These are LCD TVs that were right at the beginning of the whole LCD TV phenomenon, you know, when LCD was new, especially in the TV form factor. But before I do that, we're going to do a little taste test on some potato chips here. These are some Irish potato chips, flame grilled Irish steak, crinkle cut, sent in by Carrie. There is a mail call episode on the main channel. So I don't know, I'm just gonna make a video about something like TVs and sample some food right before we do that. These were cooked by Svetlana in Ireland. So the carbon footprint's relatively high. These made their way all the way to the US and then they got shipped again to me here on the West Coast. Let's see how these look. Oh yeah, so crinkle cut, not my favorite. I actually prefer just standard ones. These are always, always a little bit hard and when you bite down on them, they might rip up your mouth a little bit. Let's just see how these taste. We have a second one here. Well, they're pretty good. I'm really not getting the flavor of the steak though. I'm not sure what you would expect because they are potato chips, but they're salty, there's vinegar, there's potatoes. They're, they're good, they're salty and savory. The meat flavor, not really getting it. So would I go after these again if I really want some steak potato chips? Probably not. So anyways, there we go. They're still good though. I'm gonna make some lunch now. I need some of these with my sandwich. I'm back from lunch. The chips were good with my sandwich. Let's take a look at these little TVs. This one's got a cute carrying case. Oh, inside here. Okay, so I had, I had, I could already tell I had this exact Casio LCD TV. I think this is called a TV100 or the TV1. Let's see. Oh, TV430. Okay, well, I mean, the one I had certainly looked just like this. Maybe that was the model number. Don't really remember. So what this is, it's a little NTSC RF tuner. LCD TV. It's not active matrix. It's none of those things. It's got a backlit LCD and a channel up down button. These TVs were very ahead of their time, so to speak. LCD technology was not well developed when these things came out. So the quality was really not good. And I remember getting one of these and being pretty disappointed that the quality was very substandard. On the side is a power input. There's brightness and a volume knob, I think, and power switch. Oh, this thing obviously has some battery power because it just came on. The back has a little kickstand here, so you can set this up on the table. The viewing angle is very important with these early LCDs, so you just had to get it just right, and the battery life was very short, and the brightness was really dim. Let's see about these batteries here. Oh. Kirkland and one Duraleak. Okay. And they don't seem to have leaked. That's nice. And then on this side, there are a couple knobs. I think it's color and tint control. And yeah, it's analog. Those controls are analog in there. We have a rod, pull out rod antenna. And then we do have a headphone jack there. Bottom has nothing. Okay. External antenna in. There is an in antenna in jack as well. And it's a uh, like a little eighth inch jack and you have to convert that into 300 ohm, I guess, and use an adapter to go to coax and <laughs> it's all not great. But the overall condition of this TV is really nice. There's a smudge on the screen, but I would imagine that washes off. And this is the original carrying case for it, which was just cheap vinyl. So let me turn this back on again, see if there's a volume. Okay, so that's the brightness and that's working. But there's definitely no sound. When I do push the channel up down button, you see there's a little mark there moving? That is normal. That is to indicate what channel you're on. All right, so we'll look at that more in a second. Let's take a look at this little Casio TV. This is obviously a much newer one. This is a TV, I think it says 8500 up at the top here. Probably works in a very similar way with a tuning indicator on the side here, VHF, UHF buttons. It's a much chunkier form factor. It's obviously a lot bigger of a screen, but it is quite a bit thicker than this little TV. On the top here, we have a speaker. There's the tuning up down button. 
similar rod antenna. Then on the side here, we have external antenna, volume, and a brightness control, and a DC power input. TV8500, interesting all this Japanese writing here, along with this as well. It says color system, NTSC, and TV system is M. So I'm pretty sure that's North America. That would be like the channel band allocation and stuff like that. Oh, actually, wait a second. I just noticed this is not North American. This must be a Japanese market device. The channel starts at 1 to 12, and the UHF is 13 through 62. If we look at this one, this is the North American allocation. It's 2 through 13 and 14 through, well, it really goes to 83, but at some point they stopped going that high, and they sort of stopped at 69. So this that might not go to 83, but... But indeed, those are not the normal channels for the U.S. So yeah, Japanese version of the TV. How cool is that? Oh, wait, it says right there. People, and oh, wait, people are probably screaming at their screen right there. Channel Japan. <laughs> so that's the clincher. This is a Japanese television. Now we have a headphone jack on the side, but there's also audio video input. How cool. So we can really test this thing out. The bottom, there's a tint control there. I guess there is no color control anywhere else on here. And yeah, so let's take a look at the battery compartment. The kickstand is metal on this. A lot of batteries. That's a lot of batteries. Casio R, okay. There has been some leakage here because this contact is a bit blue and crusty. Uh, same with the PCB under there, but hopefully that didn't cause any permanent damage. What's strange is even though there's audio video jack here, this just has off, VHF, and UHF. There's no setting for the video input. So I wonder what the deal is with that. I have the bench power supply connected to the battery contacts, and we're going to give it the 9 volts that it so desires. Let's see, can I use this kickstand while these clips are hooked up? Yes, that will work fine. There we go. All right, giving it power. No current draw, but it's currently off. Here we go. All right, there is the image. And it's very similar to the other one. And I guess, whoops, I guess the battery contacts are flaky. Looks like we have two LEDs there and there. <laughs> and if I turn down contrast, we can just make out the little line that's moving through there. See about volume. There doesn't appear to be any volume either. But I'm thinking the tuner circuit in both of these must blank the audio and the video because we're not really getting static either. We're just getting a black screen here. Or there's a fault. Now I can push up or down and that changes the direction of the little thingy. Let's switch over to UHF. So of course I'm not picking up any TV stations because not only are there no analog broadcasts where I live, but of course they wouldn't be on the Japanese channel map anyways. So I have this cable here with RCA connectors. We're gonna plug this into the audio or the external input jack, which is this one right here. Okay. Let me turn down the volume, I guess. All right. And I don't know which of these will be the video signal, but I have my test pattern generator here. That one doesn't seem to do anything. That one doesn't seem to do anything. Aha, there it is. We have color bars. Wow, is it hard to see. <laughs> oh, that is really bad. Really, really bad. I'm not really sure the camera is conveying the bad quality of this, but it is not good. And you know what? When I had this little TV, I remember that it basically looked like this. And the, where I'm sitting right now, I'm off axis because the camera is getting a direct view to the TV. It looks super washed out for me. I've set manual focus on the camera. So hopefully that's, that's showing up. So we're looking at a convergence pattern there and it looks really bad. I mean, it's converged. Of course it is, it's an LCD TV. Back to the color bars though. I mean, that's just shocking. And before you think that maybe this is bad because it's old, no, 
pretty much this is how I remember it being. I mean, I've never seen this particular one before, but the little TV really did look this bad. It was super disappointing. When these two TVs came out, there were alternatives for small televisions, and this is an example of one of them right here. This is a Sony Watchman, which is actually a CRT-based portable TV. And you'll notice you see the phosphor there is curved, and that's because the electron beam comes up from the bottom of the TV here and hits it. But when you look straight on, the image is actually pretty good. It doesn't have great contrast because the phosphor is very white, but if you block the, the light off the phosphor, then you know, you're getting a pretty good image. Now I don't have batteries in this. Not to mention, this does not have a video input. I have two of these. This is from 1993, as you can see there. But yeah, these LCD TVs, while they were color and relatively compact, just so disappointing. And look at what's actually worse. I just glanced up at the power supply. It's giving out 9.1 volts at 438 milliamps. That's a lot of current draw. Those batteries will have very, very short life. So imagine a AA has, um, what, I don't know, 2000 milliamp hours. That means that at most, at most, you'd maybe get four hours out of the six batteries that are in here, at most, probably even less, because this thing probably shuts off when the AA still have some power left in them. So anyhow, so there you go, this little TV works. Let's uh, see about this one, see if I can power this up and maybe hook a clip lead up and we'll see if we can tune into something. Okay, I have my little RF modulator here and I kind of actually just found in my parts bin. This is one of the adapters that you need to plug an external antenna into these types of TVs. I think I've had this forever. I had a little TV that had a connection like this and it wasn't one of these, it was like a CRT TV. And look how rusty the terminals are. <laughs> I'm sure it still works. And I'll plug this into the back of the RF modulator to go from the F connector to the 300 ohm. And then I can just use clip leads or something. I don't have any original twin lead left that I could interconnect that properly. Okay, you can only imagine the RF integrity you're gonna be getting with two clip leads through all of these adapters. But here we go, let's turn this on. I'm gonna use the batteries in there. See if we can get any kind of image on there. Okay, here we are, we're getting something. There he is. I'm trying to hold it steady here, so I'm trying to hold it steady so it stays in focus, but yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, if anything, actually, this TV looks a little bit better than the larger one. <laughs> That's surprising, isn't it? I'm sure the sound is working. There's no sound coming through the generator, but with the volume turned up, I could hear, you know, background hiss of the RF and whatnot, so it's working. You know what, just for fun, I'm gonna take the batteries out of this. So let's take a look at what the current draw is. I'll hook this up to the bench supply, give it the six, I'm not six volts. Yes, of course, it's six volts that this thing wants. The orientation of the batteries in this is interesting. They all go the same direction. So obviously it has internal wiring to hook them up all in series, because this definitely runs on six volts. Before I actually power it up though, I'm just gonna test that, that that's the way this is wired, yep. So this is definitely all in series. So on this to here has nothing, yep, series. Okay, let me carefully tilt this back onto its kickstand. There we go. Are we ready? Uh, let's see, turn on the power and let's turn this on. There we go, we have an image. It's funny how it first tunes in to kind of not quite the right channel, but if I go down and up, now it's actually tuned in correctly. Let me get the brightness adjusted. So it looks a little better, because it's more like a contrast control. It actually doesn't control the backlight. All right, that's about as good as it's gonna get. This is using 300 milliamps at six volts. So quite thirsty when it comes to power consumption, although it's definitely better than this larger one, and I guess the screen of the larger one looks like it's maybe four times the size of this one. So it makes sense that it, the bigger one takes more power, but yeah, there it is. There's also an interesting high frequency noise that's coming out of this, like an oscillator or something that I can hear. So there must be an inductor or something that's causing some extra noise there. There we go, I zoomed in a little bit and I'm not holding it, so it shouldn't be shaking. But that's the image there, I'm showing a matrix. 
And there's a convergence pattern. You don't have any distortion from the CRT, and that's something that the little Sony Watchman CRT-based portable TVs could not claim. But that's looking pretty good. There's a little bit of static coming through the speaker. I thought at first perhaps that was like a capacitor in here that was ejecting its content into the TV, but I don't think so. Yeah, when I turn the speaker all the way down, I don't hear that anymore. So it's definitely just coming through the audio path. So there we have it. Two little Casio battery-powered LCD TVs. I'm thinking that these are from the early 90s, although I'm sure people can chime in and let me know when both the TV430 and the TV8500 came out. They are examples of very disappointing, poor-performing early LCD displays. It's absolutely amazing to think of how good our OLED smartphones are now compared to these types of things back then. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And of course, a subscription to my second channel would really help me out. Don't forget to check out the main channel. And I want to thank my patrons who are supporting me. That is absolutely fantastic. And that is going to be it. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.